okay, first graders, we are going to work together a lot today. Um, we are going to make sure that we can find all the clues in some problems before you go off and try to do more by yourself, okay? So I want you to have the pages from your book for today. We're on lesson 5.1, and you will need the first two pages. So let me get out of the way here. Okay, so this is what the front page lo looks like, and you're going to use two pieces of paper from here. So if you want to just keep them in your book, or if you want to tear them out, they come out really easy. Um, but you'll want to have those ready. You will also want to have um, your um, 10 chart or your 10 frame workspace um, or a different whiteboard type tool to use, okay? So we'll either use the back of that 10 frames piece um, and then you can always turn it around and use the 10 frames themselves if that's helpful. Or um, if you have another whiteboard, and if you don't have either available, then make sure you have some scratch paper you can be using, but we will want to be writing down clues as we find them, okay? So let me switch over. I'm gonna be switching a lot between um, the pages here and um, my document camera so that you can see the notes that I'm taking as we go, okay? So our goal here is to find our clues and then know how to use them. Okay, so this um, lesson is full of story problems. So we're going to be able to find the clues, be little number detectives, and then know how to use them. Okay, so let's look for the clues here in this first one. The story says there are 16 turtles on the beach. Was there a clue in that sentence? Yes, we have 16. So we have a number clue. 16 turtles on the beach. Some swim away. Is there a clue there? Okay, that word some tells us there, that a number belongs here, but we don't know what it is. Okay. Now there are nine turtles on the beach. What's our clue in that sentence? Nine. How many turtles swim away? Okay, so we are unlocking the problem. It says, what do I need to find? Okay, what is it that it's asking? It's asking how many turtles swim away? So that's what we're, we need to find. How many turtles swim away? Okay, so we can trace that. You can just leave it, that's fine too. Okay, um, and then we need to know the information from the story. So what information do I need to use? Well, you can see here our clue 16, they wrote down. They wrote down this as 16 turtles. Our clue sum, they put as a question mark. Some question mark swim away. Now there are nine turtles on the beach, so they put down nine turtles now on the beach. Okay, so their clues, um, 16, question mark, and nine. Those are the same ones we found. Okay, so then we need to figure out what we need to find. Okay, so 16, blank, and nine. Those are our clues. Now, my other question for you is, did this story tell us if we're adding or subtracting? Now, it never said add, it never said subtract, but were there words that told you that we were either getting bigger or getting smaller? Let me read it one more time. There are 16 turtles on the beach. Some turtles swim away. Now there are nine turtles on the beach. How many turtles swim away? Did you find it? The word away was our clue here. Okay, away is telling us that we are going to be getting smaller because a part of the whole is going somewhere else. Remember when we first were doing subtraction, um, we talked a lot about the phrase take away. Okay, and how take away is one of the things we see when we're talking about subtraction. 
Okay, so here we have that word away. That is a subtraction word. So we know now we're going to be using subtraction. We know what our clues are. And now we're going to be looking at how we can model that. <laughs> Excuse me. Here in the model, we are showing that nine is a part. It's the part that are on the beach. Question mark is the part that went away. The whole beginning to end is 16. That is our whole number. Notice when we were talking about 16, we didn't give any detail other than it was 16 turtles. Okay, there are 16 turtles on the beach. Then we give a detail about the next number. Some swim away. Okay, swim away. There's an action taking place with that part. We know it's a part that go away. Now there are nine turtles. Now on the beach tells you there's been a change in time. Okay, so that leaves us with the other part. Okay, so we are going to be looking for a missing part as we can see in the model here. When we are looking for a missing part, we use subtraction. Okay. They also did a model here with counters, with connecting cubes. They did 16 turtles, and they showed that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are what remain. So the rest went away. How many did they cross out? Okay. They crossed out 6 or seven, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now we could have used a lot of our different strategies. We know that 16, this is why I accidentally said six, sorry. I was looking ahead. I have a group of 10 and six more um, is 16. So if I have nine, I put one to make it a 10 and six more. 1 plus 6 means our missing part is 7. Okay, so you can see here we can use the strategies we've been practicing to help us find those missing parts. Okay, so let's look at a few problems together. Let's open this up. Okay, I am we are going to do these five problems together, and then if you still feel like you need a little more practice. Um, then you can go on to the last page with me as well, and we'll do a few more. Okay, but we'll definitely do these five together. So here, number one, okay, we're going to circle the clues when you find them. Okay, so have your pencil ready to circle the clues when we find them. There are four rabbits in the garden. There's a clue. Some more rabbits come. Now, there are 12 rabbits. How many rabbits come to the garden? Okay, on the last one, um, we talked about how away meant that it was getting smaller. Well, if it's coming, then what we have is getting bigger. Okay, so if we have a missing part, some more come, but it's going to be added to what we already have. So we started with four, some more come, and now there are 12. Okay, so we can write it as four plus blank equals 12. But let's look at that with parts and holes and decide what type of math we want to do with that. Okay. So remember before when we've done parts and holes, we've had a box that was for our hole. And we've had two smaller boxes for our parts. Of 
part there, a part there. Okay, so we have the whole, we have two parts that come together to make the whole, or we take the whole and break it into the two parts. Okay, so coming back here, we have four plus blank equals 12. Now, do we have the whole? Yes, we have the whole. Our whole is what happens when we put parts together. Okay, so our whole is what number? 12, which means four is one of the parts. Okay, so we come back here. I switched my screen a little bit to hopefully make it so I can switch back and forth quicker. There we go. Okay, so our whole was 12 and the part was four from that story. What am I missing? I'm missing a part. Okay, we've talked about it before, that, sub, that addition is part plus part to make a whole. And subtraction is take the whole minus a part to leave us with the other part. Okay, which of those do we have? Do we have two parts or do we have a whole in a part right now? We have a whole and we have a part. So I'm actually going to use subtraction. Even though the story is written to make me think addition, since I'm missing a part, I'm going to use subtraction. Okay, so if I have my whole 12, group of 10, and two more, and I take away my part of four, one, two, three, four, what's my part remaining? My remaining part is eight. So coming back here, what goes with four to make a 12? Our missing part is eight. Now there's other ways we could have thought of that. We could have said, well, four to get to my 10, I need six and then two more, seven, eight. But either way, we find the sum or the missing part is eight so that we can get to a sum of 12. Okay, looking at number two, there are 14 birds in a tree. Remember to circle your clues. Some birds fly away. There are nine birds still in the tree. How many birds fly away? Okay, again, I'm seeing that word away. So if I start with 14, some go away, and I'm left with nine. 14 minus something equals nine. Now, what do we know about parts? Okay, you can switch the parts. And it does not change the whole. So I can think of it 14 minus 9 equals something or 14 minus something equals 9. Either way, we are looking for a missing part. Okay, what can you find? What did you find? 14 minus what equals 9? Okay, you can also think of it addition. 9 plus something equals 14 because they're related. We can put parts together to find the whole. Okay, 14 means a group of 10 and 4 more. So 9 and 1 makes it a 10. And 4 more. 1 and 4, we have a group of 5. Okay, now you can find this different ways, lots of options. 14 minus something equals 9. Well, if I find my 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then that means the rest is what got subtracted. And you can see there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So many ways to think about it. 
as long as you know what the parts are and what the whole is, you're able to make the connections you need to find your answers. Okay, number three, there are 20 ducks in the pond. Then 10 ducks swim away. How many ducks are still in the pond? Okay, I hope you know this one really, really quick. Looking at the picture, what is the hole? Okay, they already found it for you. Beginning to end. Remember, the hole is always the beginning to end. So am I going to put 10 and 20 together? No, 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 no. Okay, if you put 10 and 20 together, you're adding the part to the hole, which means you're not treating the hole like a hole. You're treating the hole like a part. Okay. The hole is as big as we can get. So we already know the biggest number is 20. So we need to know how do we get to 20 if we have 10. Okay, I hope you all said the answer. Okay, the missing part is 10. 10 plus 10 is how we get to 20. Okay, 20 means two groups of 10 with nothing left over. Two groups of 10 and nothing left over. So if I have 20 ducks, and then it said 10 swim away, so I'm going to minus 10. Okay. We didn't need the word sum in there because the missing part was what we were looking for from the way the wording was already in the sentence. Okay, number four, let's read it together. Ready? Three equals land in the trees. Now, 12 equals are in the trees. How many equals were in the trees to start? We don't know what we started with. It says how many at the start? And then we brought in three, and now we have 12. Okay, we brought in three, now we have 12, but we don't know what that starting number was. Are we missing a part for the whole? Okay, we are missing a part. Okay, because we know that two parts come together to make the whole. So let's look at that. What was the whole? The number of eagles in the tree was 12. What was the part? Three. Okay, so I need to find my missing part. The part we know is three. One, two, three. But I need to keep going until I make a 12. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What did I have to add? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I had to add nine, which means the missing part was nine. Okay, nine eagles were already in the tree, so when three landed, we were able to create 12. Now I want you to look in the box. Look at the box for the number three. It's not very big, is it? That's because three isn't a very big number. Is the nine box big? Yeah, compared to the three, right? Because it's going to be a bigger number that we need to be able to make the whole 12. Notice 12 is the whole thing beginning to end. Okay, so we're not going to get bigger than 12 because that's as big as we can get. Okay. Number five, eight squirrels are in the park. Some more squirrels come. Ooh, that word come. Okay, more come. Ooh, that looks like an addition to me. So eight squirrels in the park. Some more come. And now there are 16. I hope you know this one quick. Notice the boxes. They're the same size. Why is that? The missing part is eight. Okay, eight plus Eight equals 16, okay? 
So even though it's 8 plus 8 equals 16, we could have found our answer using subtraction because we are missing a part. So even though the story sounds like addition, if we are missing a part, we can use subtraction to find the answer. Okay, if you feel like you have these connections all made and you are ready to go work on your own, you may stop right there and you may go ahead to the um, Go Math in your book, okay, or online. Okay, you can go ahead to the Go Math website. If you want to practice a couple more, we are going to continue. On the last page, there it is. Okay, we've got a few more. These don't have the boxes already, so you're really going to have to notice and pay attention. What's the whole? What's the part? Okay, so number six, Liz picks 15 flowers. Seven are pink. The rest, there's a missing number phrase are yellow. How many are yellow? Okay, looking at here, we know what the whole is. What is the whole? 15. Okay, so you can think beginning to end is going to be 15. That's our whole. So let me think. We can also draw, oh, that's not where I wanted to go. There we go. Okay. So that whole number of flowers, when we're not giving details about the flowers and we're just saying flowers, we gave the number 15. But then we started sharing some details. Okay, it says that seven are pink. Notice we know, now know that part of the flowers are pink and that part is seven. So now we're breaking that hole into pieces. A pink part and a yellow part. Did we know the yellow number? Nope, that's our question. It just said the rest. So that's our question mark. Okay. I have a whole, I have a part. What type of math am I going to do if I have a whole and I have a part? Whole minus part. I'm going to use subtraction. Okay. So if I have 15, I can draw it. I can just do it in my brain, okay? But if I have 15, I can easily take away five, six, seven, okay? There I'm taking away seven because they are the pink part. What's left to be yellow? Five, six, seven, eight. Our yellow part is eight. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Cindy has 14 sand dollars. She has the same number of large and small sand dollars. Write a number sentence about the sand dollars. Oh, this is some abstract thinking, okay? Because they only gave us one number clue, okay? The only number they gave us is 14. So we're really going to need our detective ears. And listen, what else is it telling us? Cindy has 14 sand dollars. And she has the same number of large and small Sand dollars. Okay, so let's look at this. What is our whole? Do we have the whole? Yes, because Cindy has 14. Okay, and it never said anything about getting more. What it did say is that we have part that are large and we have part that are small. But they didn't tell us the numbers. So we have the whole, we know part is large, part is small, and we also know that those numbers are the same, okay? That was an equal sign, an equal sign on its side. Yeah, I'll put it this way. 
So the large part and the small part are the same. Okay, whenever we have two numbers that are the same, we know, um, and we're and they're the parts, we know we're talking about doubles facts. Okay, so do you know a doubles fact that makes 14? I hope you're thinking through your doubles. Okay, doubles fact equal 14. What is it? Okay, seven. If you said seven, give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, seven is our doubles fact. We can break 14 into two equal pieces if those pieces are seven. But then it says write a number sentence. We need to use 14, seven, and seven to write a number sentence. What could we write? We've got options. We could write 14 minus seven equals seven. Or you could write 14 equals seven plus seven. Or you could write seven plus seven equals 14. Or you could even write seven equals 14 minus seven. Okay, but you're gonna have one of those as your number sentence. You pick which one. Okay, number eight is another brain stretcher. It says Sam has three more books than Ed. Sam has eight books. How many books does Ed have? So three more than Ed. So I'm gonna put an S for Sam. And what is Sam's number? It is three more than Ed. And then we have that that number is actually going to be eight. So we are looking for a missing part, aren't we? Three plus something equals eight. What is Ed's number? What is that something? If I'm missing a part, I can subtract or I can think what goes with three to make eight. What do you think it is? Pause if you need to figure it out. Remember, you can turn it into subtraction because we have a missing part. Eight minus three equals blank. Did you find it? It's five. Okay, try one more here. Look at this picture. We have blank, we have five, the whole is seven. What's our missing part? The story says there are seven eggs in a nest, some hatch, now there are five left. How many eggs hatch? Did you come up with two? Seven minus two equals five. Or seven minus five equals two. Okay, that's all we're going to do. It's time for you to go try these on your own. I know that was a lot. These are good things to practice. And there's not that many questions today. So I think you can do it. Look for those clues when they just give you the story and pay attention if it's parts or holes that are missing. Okay, good luck. Happy learning.